Greetings everybody and welcome to episode 3 of the 7 Days to Die XML modding tutorial series. In the last episode we covered how to add and remove recipes using XPath and we also went over how to go ahead and diagnose random problems that could occur when you're testing out your modelers in 7 Days to Die. We had a couple of examples of a wrong XPath and we also had some examples of malformed XML just so that you guys could get an idea of how to diagnose bugs and fix them up. In this episode, episode number three, we're going to be going ahead and doing some more work with recipes. As we talked about at the end of the last episode, we just we thought that some of these recipes weren't very good at being crafted in the backpack. So in this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to go ahead and craft recipes on different crafting stations, as well as making them integrate with some of the perks like Advanced Engineering or Master Chef. So without any further ado, let's get started. <laughs> Now that we're back in our recipes file, I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of changes. The first thing I want to go ahead and do is come down here and I actually want to just comment out this remove X path that we did before. Essentially, I still want the cement mix and the water filter to be in the game. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that by removing these, these should be back. Now, the reason I'm commenting this out and not outright deleting it is so that if I change my mind at a later point in time, I can go ahead and just have these added back in. But I want to keep these in this file just as an example. Now, in this episode, we want to go ahead and make some of these things craftable, not in the backpack, but on certain crafting stations. For example, we've got one for a food of chicken, which means this one would probably be craftable in the campfire. We've also got one for acid, which would suit the chemistry station. We've got mechanical parts, which would probably suit the forge with a bit of adaptation. And then we've also got one for electrical parts, which I think would be a good one for the workbench. So first of all, let's go and see how we would make something craftable on the workbench. Let's go ahead and look at a regular recipe and let's go ahead and find something that is crafted on the workbench. And hey, would you look at that? There is a chemistry station recipe right here. And as you can see, it's got this thing here called craft underscore area. And then it's got workbench, right? So this is what makes the chemistry station craftable on a workbench. So essentially, in order to make anything craftable on a workbench, all you need to do in your recipe is go into the recipe that you want to alter. And then in the actual recipe tag, we're going to add the craft area attribute right here. And it's going to go ahead and be on the craft area of workbench. Now, this is very easy to do, but we're actually going to make some notes up here as well. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and add some notes up here so we can keep track of what everything does. So uh, we're going to say recipe uh, craft underscore area. And that is the workstation that the recipe needs to be made on. If this is not specified, <laughs> if this is not specified, if this is not specified, then the recipe can be made in the backpack. So as you can see, when we didn't specify it, this will be a backpack recipe, but now this will be craftable on the workbench. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hop straight back into Seven Days to Die. We're going to go ahead and make a save right here as well, so we can go ahead and make sure that's all saved up. And then we're going to go ahead and load the game again, and we're going to see that this change has taken effect. All right, so here we go. So we're going to load up the game here, and then we're just going to go ahead and continue the game as we did before. And then we're going to go into our test world, and here we go. So go right into here, and let's go ahead and do the F1 test just to make sure that everything is loading properly, because we don't want any random X path errors or anything like that. There shouldn't be, but hopefully this time we should also see that the cement mixer is still there. So let's go ahead first of all and do this one. And then in just a minute, we should find that once this is done, we can go ahead and then we'll see that when we load into the world, this will now be makeable on the workbench. So let's go ahead and uh, open up our crafting menu as soon as the world loads. Looks like everything did load fine as well, which is amazing. So let's go ahead now, come out of this, go into this. And now let's just type in electrical parts. And lo and behold, would you look at that? These electrical parts now require the workbench in order for these guys to be crafted, which is absolutely awesome. All right. Now, there's a couple of things when it comes to the workbench, and I want to go ahead and show you this as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the progression here over here, and we're actually going to go under to the intellect tree. Now, there is a perk in the intellect tree called advanced engineering. Now, when you go ahead and look at this one, 
you can see that things can craft faster at certain workstations. So for example, when you've got level two, as you can see, this means that things will go ahead and craft 20% faster at workbenches and cement mixes, of course. Um, and you can see as you get more, as you get more then things craft faster and they may cost less as well. And as you can see at level four and five, it says electrical devices cost less, actually level three. So at level three and up, these devices also cost less to craft. So it would be nice if our electrical parts recipe had that property as well. So how do we go ahead and do that? First of all, let's go ahead and look at some regular vanilla recipes and let's go ahead and look that look for something that is like electrical. So let's go ahead and find a I don't know. Let's look at the um, the dart trap. That sounds like a good idea. So let's go and look at the dart trap. Now, you can see that this like the electrical parts is also crafted on the workbench. However, you can also see that it's got some tags as well here. So you can see that this thing right here has got the tags of Perk Advanced Engineering for one of them. So tags essentially allow your recipes to essentially go ahead and tie in to perks. And of course, the advanced engineering perk is the one we are interested in. Now, this this to actually could be used with another tag as well. As you can see, for example, the dew collector is also crafted on the workbench. Um, but as you can see, this one has a tag of workbench crafting. Now, essentially, the tags will allow you to go ahead and specify what perks interact with them. Now, advanced engineering, this tag, if you apply this one, it will essentially allow you to craft things for cheaper, which is specified under here. You can see this recipe also has this thing, which is an effect group. And you can see that it has a passive effect of the crafting ingredient count. And essentially, depending on what level of the perk you have, it will depend on how much this thing is. So you can see that when we are level zero, so when we are level zero, one or two, of this perk level, you can see that the actual crafting costs are actually increased by 15%, then they drop to 34% addition, then to 15% at level four. And then finally at level five, the recipe will cost this amount, which is the cheapest. So that's a lot to take in. So let's go ahead and handle the first one, which is how can we make it craft faster on a workbench? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and let's make a note over here. So we can go ahead and say recipe, uh, so recipe tags, right? So recipe tags, um, these specify which perks and other effects the recipe can interact with. Okay, so this might seem a little bit more advanced for now, but trust me, things will get easier as we go. So first of all, let's go ahead and add some tags, right? So the first thing we want to do, we're going to go ahead and add a tags attribute to our recipe. And we're going to say workbench crafting. Now that's the first tag that we want to add. Now, especially with this first tag here, we don't need to worry about anything. This tag right now will essentially ensure that this thing will craft faster at workbenches as we perk up in advanced engineering. The perk side of things actually handles this one in particular. However, we also want to go ahead and add the advanced engineering perk as well so that that can interact with how much this thing costs. So let's go ahead and go, we're going to also say perk advanced engineering like that. And as you can see, or oh, I put engineering, I need engineering, got to make sure it's spelled exactly the same. And you can see that you can have as many tags as you like, as long as you separate them via a comma. So as long as they're separated via a comma, you can put as many tags in as you want to. Now, the perk advanced engineering tag doesn't actually do anything on its own. But you can see that in this recipe we have up here, we have this effect group under all the ingredients, and then we have a passive effect, which affects the crafting ingredient count. So what we wanted to do is make this thing start out more expensive when we haven't leveled up, and then it will go ahead and make things cheaper as we go. So let's go ahead and copy this, and we're actually going to adapt it for our recipe. So we're gonna come and copy this thing, and then essentially we're gonna go ahead and put this effect group just under the ingredients, just like that. So essentially what this is going to do is it's going to, if we have forged iron, mechanical parts or electrical parts or oil as any of our ingredients, it's going to go ahead and reduce those crafting costs as we go. However, you can see that we don't actually have uh, mechanical parts or electrical parts or oil as any of these things. So we actually need to change this tags here to reflect the ingredients that we do have. So 
as you can see we've already got the forged iron that's fine but we've also got the scrap polymers so we're actually going to copy this one in right here so we'll copy that one right there and then we've also got the acid so we're going to go ahead and copy that one as well well the acid i think will always take one so we're actually going to leave the acid off so this means that this is only going to affect these two ingredients crafting costs and what it does is essentially this thing here this operation equals perk add essentially takes the base value that you've given it so for example if we look at the forged iron and the base value here that we need is two right and what it's going to say at level zero is going to add a percentage of that to this base value in this case 56 percent which is roughly 1.12 to this value of two here so essentially when we haven't leveled up at all this is actually going to end up costing us three i believe it rounds to the nearest whole number for the number of ingredients you need so at level zero and one and two actually of this perk it's actually going to cost uh, it's actually going to cost three of these and then as we level up a bit further it will then get cheaper and then start costing two so these ingredient counts essentially reflects what this is going to be at the highest level of the perk now you can go ahead and do it the other way if you find it a bit easier you can specify like how much you want it to cost at level zero and then go the other way but in order to keep it vanilla friendly we're going to keep it like this and let's see how this affects things so i'm going to go ahead and save this now and then we're going to go ahead and come out of the game uh, so we're going to go ahead and exit out of here and then we're going to go ahead and continue and then we're going to go ahead and head back into our test world so we're going to go ahead and head back in here and let's see how this works now so we're going to go ahead and head back in again let's go ahead and do the f1 test make sure that all of the items are in white that we don't get any yellow text apart from of course the animator state which i don't believe we do so everything seems fine right now so yeah passive effects may be a little bit difficult to understand but they will play a more important role later in the tutorial so getting getting familiar with these early will definitely help you later so let's go ahead and look at the electrical parts recipe right now and see what happens now so if we look at this now you can see now that right now even though i've said that it has to go ahead and use two of these things because we've added 50 percent to the initial crafting cost because we're level zero these things actually now cost three as you can see you can also see it takes 21 seconds to craft on a workbench however there's a cool command we can use and we're going to go ahead and first of all come into here and in f1 type in these letters dm and that's going to go ahead and turn on debug mode then we're going to go and type in give self xp all as one word and in a space and then we're going to put a one followed by six zeros that's going to give us a million xp which essentially is going to level our player up a lot so we're going to go ahead and do that and it's going to give us a lot of skill points and then we're going to go ahead and spend the skill points to see how this affects the recipe so now that we've got these skill points here let's go ahead and spend them right so as you can see i've got 35 skill points so we're going to go under intellect here and we're going to go ahead and level this up to as high as we can and then let's go ahead and go into advanced engineering and we're going to level this up now what we should find is if we now look at our recipe you'll see now that the electrical parts instead of taking 21 seconds to craft because we have the workbench crafting tag it now only costs it now only takes 13 seconds so essentially now we can craft it a little bit quicker which is awesome you'll also notice now that we're at level five no extra costs have been added to the uh to the costs of our recipe here so now it's costing what it did when we specified it in the xml so that's essentially how the advanced engineering stuff and the workbench crafting stuff all works together so essentially at level zero of the perk when we haven't invested anything the forged iron and the scrap polymers will have a 56 percent higher cost because we are doing a percentage add operation to the base value now because these are initially two it's going to get increased by roughly 50 percent so roughly up to three so it's going to cost it's going to cost three while we've got level zero one or two of the perk so essentially these numbers here these ones here correspond to these percentage increases here so essentially it's saying at level zero it's adding 56 percent 
at level one again it's adding another 56 percent. it's still adding 56 percent. level two it's still adding 56 percent. but then when you get to level three where you can craft electrical parts for a little bit cheaper well then it's down to 34 percent when you're at level four it's only adding 15 percent to the cost which means that it will probably only cost one of each because it rounds down to the nearest integer value and then finally level five isn't actually specified here but it would also be equivalent to writing five and then when we come down to when we come down to this line we would need to add a comma like this and just say zero so essentially that's the same as a, as writing this but because at level five there's no change we don't actually need to go ahead and specify that so so we can go ahead and just leave it like this. But that's how essentially you can go ahead and make a workbench recipe and especially an electrical recipe interact with advanced engineering, which is really, really nice. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and move on to another one. Let's go and try a chemistry station recipe. So let's go ahead and look in the recipes to see how something is crafted on the chemistry station. So why don't we look at maybe the first aid kit It's probably a good one because I believe that does take a chem station to craft it right and as you can see this one as you can see right here has medical first aid kit it's got this time a craft area of chemistry station so essentially to craft it on the chemistry station all we really need to do is go ahead and add this craft area of chemistry station to it so let's go ahead and grab this we're going to copy this craft area and then for our recipe here, for that's the items one, I need to go into my recipes. For the acid one, we're gonna go ahead and put in this one right here, crafting area equals chemistry station. Now, there is a perk in the game as well. So we're gonna go ahead and come into our perks again. And this one is physician, right? So this physician perk also makes it, um, I think it also makes it craft items faster as well. So let's go ahead and make sure we've got all those. So that's for splints and stuff. Let's go see. So let's see. Um, remember with buttons, each one there with. Oh, it looks like they've actually changed this. So it looks like they've changed these ones because I remember that Chemstation Crafted uh, used to change a little bit. But I wonder if that's now in. I wonder if that's now back in advanced engineering. Let's just have a look. So. Fast from the forge, craft glue cheaper. Ah, I believe that also comes under chemistryization crafting as well. So there is that as well. Uh, workbenches and cement mixers. So it looks like still physician does affect certain things. So the chemistryization crafting tag seems to have changed since the last time I've seen it. However, we should still add it to be compliant with vanilla. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and copy these tags here. And we're just going to take the chem station crafting one. We're just going to leave the learnable one alone for now because we don't really need that one yet. We will get into that a little bit later on. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and add the tags of chem station crafting. So we're just going to remove the learnable and the comma. And we just have the one tag here of chem station crafting. Now, I believe this does make things go faster at a chemistry station. So it might still do that. And I believe it does. It just might not be mentioned in the localization anymore. So I think it will do. But as you can see now, let's go, let's go and have a look and see if that's actually correct. So let's go ahead and look at our acid. So let's go ahead and have a look here. So we'll go into our acid here. So currently this isn't craftable on the chemistry station and it takes a minute 25. So let's go ahead and load out of the game and then we'll go ahead and load back in again. Let's also make sure we save our file and then we'll go load in again. And let's see if the chem station crafting does affect anything. I believe it did used to affect the speed, but that might be different now. So let's go and have a look because a lot of this is also about discovery to see what else we can find out because a lot of things have changed since alpha 18 which is when we did our last morning tutorial series so we'll load back into the world let's also go ahead and do the f1 test make sure that we don't get any red text only got some yellow on the animator which is fine so let's go ahead and look now so as we go into the acid now let's see right now so as you can see it's craftable on the chemistry station but it doesn't look like the timing has changed so why don't we go ahead and invest into the physician perk or maybe it's actually to do with the medical journals actually it could be it could be medical journals now but let's go ahead and do let's go ahead and uh, do these perfect now let's go ahead and see if this changed 
So, ah yes, it does. So as you can see, it still does, even though it's not as mentioned in the perks. So Physician does, in fact, make things also craft faster in the chemistry station. So because we've included the chem station crafting tag in here, then every time we level up Physician, things are going to craft that little bit faster, which is absolutely awesome. All right, so that's two recipes done. We've got a workbench one and a chemistry station one. Let's go ahead and look at the next one. Let's go ahead and look at the, the canned chicken recipe. And this one would probably be more suited to be crafted on the campfire, right? That seems, you know, it's a food recipe and most food recipes are crafted on the campfire, right? So we may as well go ahead and add that one to the campfire. So like before, let's go and look at a food recipe. So let's try, let's look for meat stew, shall we? Because that's uh, usually a simple one. So we'll go ahead and look for meat stew here. And as you can see, this one, has got uh, this one has got a craft area of campfire. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this one. So you got a campfire right here, and we're going to go ahead and add this craft area here. So this will essentially make the can of chicken now craftable at the campfire. Now, the other thing is we can also specify, as you guys might remember, on the campfire, we have a cooking pot, a cooking grill and a beaker that can be used as a crafting tool. So you know how some recipes need a crafting tool? We could also specify that maybe we need a cooking pot in order to do this. So how do we do that? Well, if we go back into this recipes one here, um, I'm actually going to reload that one and let's go back to our vanilla one here. As you can see, there's another attribute here that we haven't seen yet called craft tool. So if we go ahead and take this guy, you can see that this craft tool essentially means that this recipe, the meat stew, is crafted in the campfire, but you also need a cooking pot for it to actually be unlocked. So let's go ahead and use this guy. And we are going to go ahead and add that to our recipe right here. So now this food of chicken now requires a cooking pot and a campfire in order to go ahead and craft it, which is great. Now, the last thing is there is a MasterChef perk as well. So you may remember that MasterChef does affect your crafting of your, it does affect crafting of the food and how fast it is. Now, when it comes to MasterChef, there is a couple of things that this perk does. And you can see that this one does also have a passive effect right here as well. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and take this tag here of perk MasterChef. Again, we're gonna leave the learnable one off and we're going to include that with our recipe. So we're going to go ahead and do this one. And we're going to do this one. Tags as Perk Master Chef. And we're going to leave off Learnable because that's something else entirely. And we'll get to that at another point in time. But for now, let's go and do that. Now, what Perk Master Chef does on its own, essentially, it will make it so that when you craft stuff at the campfire, the higher you are perked into Master Chef, then the faster you will go ahead and craft it. However, the MasterChef perk is different in that it also governs how many ingredients are required. So let's go into MasterChef here and under the strength tree, right? So we'll go under here and then as you can see, it says at Bachelor, we find more cooking magazines and loot and we use 20% less of a recipe's main ingredients, right? So that's one thing that we can find. And I believe at this level here, we actually use 40%. So at level one, we use 20% less. And at level three, and at level three, we use 40% less. And this essentially is what the passive effect is doing in our recipes here. So you'll see that for the meat stew one, for example, we have an effect group with a passive effect here, and it affects the crafting ingredient count. Now this time, last time we looked at perk at, but this time we're looking at base at. And you can see that at level one, it's got a base, it will actually add a value of minus one to any food with these tags. So you see, so you see in here, it's got the food raw meat tag. So initially at level zero, it's gonna cost five raw meat to make this, right? However, when you get to level one of MasterChef, it's gonna go ahead and add minus one to this. So essentially, it's going to add minus one to this value here, which means at level one of Perk MasterChef, you end up with only having four raw meat per recipe. Then when it gets to level three, which is over here, it's actually going to add a value of negative two to this base value right here. So that means when we get to level three, because this tag is raw meat here, which is the same as that ingredient, instead of costing five, once we get to level three of MasterChef, this will only end up costing three raw meat per recipe. You don't have to do it just with raw meat as well. You can do it with other things, but let's go ahead and copy this effect group and see if this matches what we need for ours. So we're gonna go into here and then we're gonna go ahead and add this effect group down here like this. So as you can see, 
we don't actually need to change anything on this one at all because as you can see this is essentially doing the same thing to raw meat it costs five raw meat just like the meat stew does but this time it's essentially just adding minus one at level one and then minus two at level three which essentially is going to take take this from five to four at level one and then from five to three when we get to level three finally which is really good however what could we do if we also wanted to half the cost of the feathers that we added so say we still needed to add feathers but let's say you know when we're when we're like a, a much better master chef we're not going to be using feathers anymore right or we're, we're, they'll have much less chance of actually having a feather in there how will we go ahead and make it so that the feathers essentially go from two to one when we get to level three well here's what we can do we're going to go ahead and start another passive effect here like this and we're going to go ahead and this is a self-closing tag so we're going to go ahead and self-close this just like this now the passive effect needs a name and the name of this passive effect uh all the passive effects have specified names and you can actually find a list of all of them in the buffs xml file at the bottom if you want to find all of them but crafting ingredient count is the one that we need okay so what we want to say is when we get to level three of master chef and as you can see because we got the tags uh, i've actually said it tags up there i've got to say that it's tags because we've got tags of perk master chef then it's going to say this level one to three with of the master chef is going to affect it but this one we only want it to happen at level three okay so we've figured out the name of the effect we've figured out the level that we want the effect to activate when it comes to master chef now we want to go ahead and do an operation so the operation we can add we can either add a base value so we can just add a flat value or we can add a percentage value and i think for this one we're also good at doing a base add value right so if we go to operation here and this is going to be base underscore add so this is going to add a base add just adds a flat value to whatever you want it to so this time we want to reduce the amount of feathers from two to one. So how do we get from two to one? We subtract one, right? So in our value, we're gonna go ahead and just type in negative one like this, but we also need to tell it which of these ingredients to apply it to. So we're gonna go tags, and then we need to tell it the name of the ingredient that we want to apply it to, which in this case is the feather. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the feather right here. And we're going to go ahead and put this right here. So essentially, when we read this off, now this effect group has two passive effects inside it, and they will both work simultaneously with each other. So the first passive effect just means that it'll affect how much raw meat is used in this recipe. So eventually at level three, it'll take this from five to three. Now the passive effect underneath that will also work on the feathers. And it will say that eventually the amount of feathers that we need will go down from two. And at level three, we're going to add a minus one to the amount that we need. And it will go all the way down to one. So it will actually cost less. So let's go ahead now. And we're going to go ahead and save our thingy here. And we're going to go ahead and reload the world. And we're going to see if this takes effect. So let's come out of here. And we're going to reload it one more time. Um, actually, this is the second last time we're going to load the world in this episode. So we're going to reload it one more time here and add the test world here. And here we go. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll add this all in. And then when it loads up fully, we can go ahead and see how this is going to affect it. So here we go. So initializing world. And of course, we've always got to do the F1 test, right? So we're going to go ahead and do the F1 test. Like I said, get into a habit of the F1 test. It will be your friend. And here we go. We are now in the world. So let's go have a look at our chicken. OK, so let's go ahead and look at the uh, the chicken ration right here. So as you can see right now, it costs one water, five meat and two feathers. Let's go ahead and put some points into strength here. And then we'll go ahead and we'll go and perk into Master Chef. So I'm going to level this up to 10. Uh, or I guess we can only go up to level 7. So we need to give ourselves some more XP. So we can just use the uh, go press the up arrow twice on the console to get previous commands if you're still in game. So we're going to go back into DM again. So and then we're going to go up again and give ourselves a few more things here. We're going to need to refresh this to refresh how many skill points we have. And there we go. Now I've got 13 more of these. So let's go ahead and just max this out right here my character is very strong now and then we're going to go ahead and invest one point into master chef for now so here we go so we'll put one into master chef first and then let's go ahead and look at that same recipe again so now you can see that the chicken ration as you can see it said at level one it looks for raw meat and will subtract one from how much it costs right so now as you can see the raw meat has now gone down to four thanks to that first passive effect so let's go ahead now and perk two more levels into Master Chef. So we're going to go up to level three now because that's when the other effect kicks in, right? So here we go. We're going to go into level three. 
And now, if we go back onto here, you can see now that as well as the meat now going down to three, which was the second part of that first passive effect, you can also see now that thanks to that second passive effect that we wrote to accommodate for the feathers, now we only need one feather in order to go ahead and craft this. So essentially we've half the cost of feathers, which now means this chicken ration recipe is now fully compatible with the vanilla perks, which is absolutely awesome. So as you can see now, we can now specify a recipe to be crafted on a campfire. We can specify it to require a certain tool and we can also make it work with other things as well, which is great. So we can make it work with perks, which is super nice. For the last one, I want to go ahead and look at the I want to go ahead and look at the mechanical parts. This time I want to go ahead and craft this at the forge. Now, this is going to be a little bit different because we have to do a few things in order to make a forge recipe work. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and say that I want to add a craft area of the forge, right? So let's go and find a recipe that's made on the forge. Probably the forged iron is a good one. So let's go and go recipe space name equals and then we can say resource forged iron. Maybe that'll do it. There we go. So this is the uh, this is the forged iron one. Now we're going to go ahead and see that it's got the craft area forged which is good. So we're going to go ahead and grab this one. Let's grab this guy. So craft area of forge. Let's go ahead and grab this. And then we're going to go ahead and add that to our recipes file like this. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we can go ahead and save this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come out of the world and go back in and we're just going to put down a forge and uh, we're just going to put one down and then we're going to see how this works. So let's go ahead and continue again. So once again, we're reloading. <laughs> OK, maybe I lied. We may be reloading several times into this to make this work, but let's go ahead and come back in now. And again, F1 test, make sure everything's fine. My game kind of stuttered a bit then, so I think I might have had an error, but I think we're OK. So yeah, sometimes you'll notice you'll get an error if the game kind of stutters a bit when it loads, but that could also be due to poor optimization because let's face it, seven days isn't the best optimized. And let's go ahead and load into the world here. Right, this time then, let's go ahead and go into creative mode. To go into creative mode, go into console and type in CM like that, and then come out of here and press U. Now we'll be in creative mode and you can see we can put down anything we like. So let's go ahead and get the forge like this and let's go ahead and grab one of these guys so we're just going to grab this into my hotbar grab this guy and then we're just going to put this guy down right there and now what we should be able to do is look for mechanical parts right so there they are so mechanical parts are in the forge and as you can see right here we've got the recipe right here however as you can see, something is kind of wrong with this, right? So if, if, you, if you think about this, something is kind of wrong with this. Let me get all the ingredients we need. So we need steel, brass, duct tape, and oil. Let's go back into creative mode. So again, we're going to press U and then we need, okay, so first of all, steel. Um, so we're going to need some of that. We're going to need brass. So we're going to need some of that. And then we got uh, duct tape. So we'll get some of that. And we need oil. Like that. Uh, oi! There we go. Oil. There we go. So we got some oil there. And then we're also going to need some wood to burn in the forge as well. Let's go ahead and get one of those. Nice. All right. So let's go ahead and put our wood in the forge. And let's see. Now you can see we can go ahead and craft this thing. But this is kind of weird, right? Because as you can see, we can craft this thing. But the weird thing is, none of my stuff is actually going into the forge. So you can see I've not actually had to put anything into the forge to go ahead and craft this thing. So if you want to use the forge in a bit of a different way to add some crafting recipes like that, then you can. However, it's a little bit weird and it doesn't really suit the way the forge works. So you can see this thing will craft just fine. And by the time it does come out, we should see it pop into the output slot just at the bottom. So in a couple of seconds, there we go. We got our mechanical parts. So as you can see, Instead of having to melt materials like you usually would in the forge, this recipe kind of just used materials and crafted like it would a different workstation, which is obviously not what we want. So what the hell do we have to do in order to fix this up? OK, well, let's go and have a look at the recipes again and see what we need to do. OK, let's go and have a look here. Well, the first thing I've noticed is there's this other tag right here called material based. So that seems to apply to all the forge recipes. So let's go ahead and add this guy here and let's see what it does. So we'll go ahead and add material base right here. And then we're going to go ahead and add this to our forge here. So we're going to add it just before craft area. 
and we're now going to say it is material based. Now what material based does essentially it means it looks inside the forge's inventory for the materials rather than looking in the player's backpack for the materials and that's what we want to do. However there is also something else. You can't have just forge steel and, and stuff inside the forge, right? That doesn't actually work. What we need to do in order to make this actually compatible is we need to also swap this for units of material. So when you melt something into the forge, essentially it converts a material like a piece of scrap iron into a unit of that material. And as you can see, if we look at a regular forge recipe, you can see that it says it requires some units of iron and units of clay. So essentially the units of iron and units of clay are the forge's internal way of storing how much stuff it has. So this is a little bit tricky so what we need to do is we're going to go ahead and copy these unit and iron of unit and clay here and we're going to come into here and essentially forge steel we could probably replace with unit of iron and unit of clay right because clay requires you know this or sorry steel requires the clay right so we can go ahead and do that so we're going to essentially swap those over and that's going to take care of our forge steel part of it now we've also got brass right now brass outside the forge is called scrap brass but when you're inside the forge it's actually called unit underscore brass as well so we're going to have to go ahead and do that so we need to change that over as well let's also adjust the values to account for how much steel we need so let's go ahead and change that to 30 we'll change the clay to about let's change the clay to like 25 and then we'll increase the brass also to 25 as well we're going to go and increase those now of course things like duct tape and oil cannot be made into units inside a forge so we're just going to have to go ahead and remove these guys instead now as you can see we've essentially made this require iron clay and brass in the forge and then because we're a material based recipe it will go ahead then and make it so that instead of looking in our backpack it will look inside the forge's inventory instead now anything made of steel though requires a crucible right so why don't we go ahead and see if there is a crucible craft item that we can add because i know the forge has one so what do we need to call our craft tool well as you can see it's actually right here you can see this one is craft tool equals tool forge crucible so let's go ahead and add this guy and there we go so we're going to go and make this thing be crafted in the crucible as well so we need a crucible in order to actually make this thing work because as before, when it was a regular recipe, it was steel based. So we do want to make sure that, you know, it's kind of gated behind the same thing. Lastly, we do have some tags as well to contend with. So just like with the other ones, you can also see that we have these tags here again under perk advanced engineering, right? So when it comes to the advanced engineering perk, let's go ahead and have a look and see what happens here. So if we go into our progression here, and again we're going to go under advanced engineering so that's under intellect and then we're going to go to advanced engineering right here you can see that when we come into here items craft 20 percent faster at the forge right and then we also have uh, all forge recipes cost 10 percent less crafting forge steel and electrical devices cost 15 percent less so as you can see all of these things start to cost less at the forge at level three and higher okay so let's go ahead and use some passive effects to make that work so in order to do that, let's go ahead and copy this passive effect right here just a bit. So we're going to go ahead and grab this lot and we're just going to go ahead and copy this over. So we're going to move this guy over to here and there's our passive effects. But we also need to add our advanced engineering tag as well. So we also have to go in the recipe here. We have to go tags equals perk advanced engineering just like that and that will make sure that this interacts with the advanced engineering perk as we go now you can see that it's already got the values kind of pre-populated for us under percentage ads all we have to do is make sure that all of the units are accounted for in these tags so as you can see the iron and clay is however we don't have the unit brass accounted for so we also have to add another value in here with a comma and call it unit underscore brass right there i'm also going to go ahead and rearrange these ingredients just a little bit so that we can go ahead and have iron and brass first and then clay at the bottom because it will just look a little bit neater right so once you got that we're going to go ahead and head back into game and make sure that this actually works as it should now so what we're going to do is we're going to come back out of here we're going to go ahead and head out and then while this is heading out make sure this is saved and then we're going to go ahead and continue and reload the game one more time so let's go ahead and reload it 
here we go. So coming back in the world, and of course, you know it by now, the F1 test. Make sure that nothing is wrong, and it doesn't look like anything is going bad so far, so we are all good for now. So there we go. Because yeah, a lot of this is going to be easier if you just copy paste, because then you can go ahead and just change the things you need to without worrying about the formatting. So here we go. So back into here. And now, as you can see, if we come into the forge at this point, you can see now that if we look for the mechanical parts recipe this time, you'll see this time I can't craft it. But this time it requires iron, brass and clay inside the forge. And you can also see that it says a crucible is required in order to make this now. So I can only go ahead and use this once I'm in the forge, which is great. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to give myself a forget an elixir. So we're going to go to uh, we're going to go to creative mode and then we're going to go press U and then we're going to look at one of these forget an elixirs right here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and consume one. There you go. Are you sure you want to reset all your skills? All points will be returned to use some other skills. Yes, we are. All right. So if I go ahead and do that, we're going to go ahead and uh, reverse all of our skills here. And then if we have a look in here now, we should see that these things take longer to craft now. So the advanced engineering perk also governs the forge crafting speed. And you can see now that because we've reset our perks, it takes longer. And as you can see, additionally, all these materials are actually more expensive until we get a higher level of perk advanced engineering. So that means now that the advanced engineering perk also affects this as it should with everything else. And that is how you can successfully set up some recipes on different workstations like the forge, the workbench, the chemistry station, and many other things. We didn't cover the cement mixer, but that is very, very similar. And in fact, it's probably one of the easier recipe, uh, recipe workstations to go forth with. Alrighty guys, we are back in our recipes XML file. So I understand this might have been a lot to take in, especially with all these passive effects and new things that we've seen in this episode. But in order to summarize, Together, we're going to go ahead and make one more recipe on the workbench that interacts with advanced engineering and the workbench crafting perk. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead essentially and use this as an example to pretty much summarize everything we've covered up to this point. So let's go ahead and add a recipe for the water, the water filter because I think that would be a good one. Currently, it's not craftable and it would kind of be nice if it was, right? So let's just type in filter in here to see what it shows up as. And as you can see, it's literally just called resource water filter. So let's go ahead and get one of these and let's go ahead and come over here and we're going to make a new recipe. Now, this one, I'm actually going to write out completely from scratch and we're going to fill in the parts as we go. We'll start from the most basic and then we'll work our way up. First of all, let's go ahead and just get the recipe made for the water filter without worrying about any of the craft area or anything like that. So let's do this first. So first of all, we're going to go recipe. So we need to make a recipe tag. And of course, we've got to close it. And then we're going to leave a bit of a space here. And this one, we're going to say the recipe's name. And then the name of the recipe is the thing we want to craft, right? So in this case, we want to craft the water filter. And we want to count, we want to craft one of these. So we're going to set count equal to one. There we go. So before worrying about where it's crafted, let's go ahead and worry about the ingredients first. So let's go ahead and say, let's say it's going to require, well, usually it's like metal pipes, cloth, sand and charcoal would probably be a good recipe for this. So let's go ahead and see if we can find like all, all of those in recipes. So let's look for, let's look for a metal pipe, right? So let's just type in pipe and let's see what comes up. Ah, there we go. Resource metal pipe. That's what's crafted in the forge, right? So first of all, we need to add an ingredient. And then, of course, this is a self-closing tag. And then we need to give the ingredient a name. So we're going to give the ingredient a name here. And the name of the ingredient is the metal pipe. And let's say it's just going to require one of these metal pipes. Here we go. So we're going to require one of those things. And there we go. Looking good. Right. Next up, we're going to want to add some other stuff. So why don't we maybe try to add... Hmm. Yeah, let's go. Let's go for the sand next. So let's go and do that. So is there one for sand? Let's just type in sand here and let's see what comes up. So there's food sham sandwich, but that's not what we want. And here we go. Resource crushed sand. That sounds like a good one. So let's go ahead and get this one. And then we're going to go ahead and add that here as another ingredient. So we'll open another ingredient tag like this. I'm going to say ingredient name equals resource crushed sand. And then let's say that's going to require Let's, gonna, let's say that it requires 10 crushed sand. Sounds pretty good. And I remember to close that ingredient tag so that we don't get any XML errors. There's two ingredients. Let's go another third one. So for the third ingredient, well, I wanted to add cloth and it's actually right here. So let's go ahead and grab this guy. 
and we're going to go ahead and do a third one. So again, we're going to go ingredient. And then the name of that ingredient here is going to be resource cloth. Let's say that requires five. There you go. So five cloth right there. Remember, close that ingredient tag. And we also want to go ahead and maybe have some charcoal as well. So I think there's not actually charcoal, but there's just regular coal, right? So yeah, there it is. There's actually um, resource coal right here. So that sounds like a good idea. So we can go ahead and do our last ingredient as coal right here. So here we go. So ingredient name. And that's just going to be resource coal. And then the count for that. Let's just say that requires, again, eh, we'll just say four coal. That'll do. So four coal, ten sand, some cloth, and then a um, and the metal pipe. That should be good for a water filter. I'm also going to go ahead and control shift and up arrow while on that ingredient. So you can make sure that the crushed sand and the coal come first before the cloth. And that should go ahead and be a basic recipe for the water filter. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this craftable on the workbench. Now remember, to make it craftable on the workbench, you've got to specify the craft area, right? So we're going to go in the recipe part, we're going to go craft underscore area. So we're going to add that attribute to the recipe element right there. And then we have to give that attribute a value. And the value of that attribute is going to, of course, be just workbench. There we go. Now we've got that done. The next thing we want to do is make it so that as we level up in advanced engineering, we start crafting it faster on the workbench. And of course, the tag for that is going to be, so we need tags. So we're adding another tags attribute here, and we're going to add workbench crafting. Remember, it has a capital C and it has to be spelled exactly like this because everything is case sensitive. So it has to be spelled just like this. Okay, so essentially this recipe now will be crafted on the workbench and as we level up perk advanced and engineering, the workbench crafting tags will kick in and it will make it craft faster, which is awesome. However, how do we also make it so that the advanced engineering perk will make it so that it costs a little bit less every time? Well, let's go ahead. First of all, we need to add that to our tags, right? So we need to tell this recipe that it interacts with the advanced engineering perk. So let's go ahead and do that by adding perk advanced engineering to our tags like this. Then we need to go ahead and add an effect group, right? So at the bottom underneath all our ingredients, we add an effect group. And this one, we're just going to close off like this. And inside our effect group is where we go ahead and add the passive effects. So this one is going to be a passive effect. And this one is a self-closing tag. So I'm going to go ahead and just self-close it there. Now, the name of the passive effect is essentially what it does. Like I said, the predefined list of names is all in buffs. But in this one, again, we want to use a crafting ingredient count. So we're just going to go ahead and shift over that. And then we want this to affect different levels of the perk, right? Now, when it comes to the workbench one, um, as you can see, we'll go up here because we can have a look at the levels here. Now, this one affects it from level zero to four and the values are right here, right? So I'm going to go ahead and copy essentially the rest of this passive effect line and then we're going to change the thing that we want. So this time we're going to go ahead and do the same with the levels because like I said, this is a workbench recipe, so it will, me it will need the same kind of passive effect here. So we're going to go ahead and put this in here just like that. So now we've pretty much got our passive effect and it says a level zero it's going to add about 56% to this to, the, to any resources that we have tagged. So the metal pipe probably wouldn't make sense, but we need to go ahead and change these tags here to tell it which resources that it's going to affect. Now, it's not really going to affect the metal pipe because if you add 50% to a metal pipe, that's going to be like 1.5 and that's probably going to just stay around one. So it's not really going to do that much. Plus, it doesn't make sense that you need a whole extra metal pipe to craft it. However, maybe the amount of crushed sand and coal you need will actually increase if you're not as good at making a filter yet. And maybe the cloth too. So we're actually going to go ahead and add those three. So we're actually going to remove all these tags here. And then for each of these ingredients, we're going to say we want this passive effect to affect these ingredients here. So we want it to affect the sand. So we're going to add that one as a tag. Then we're going to put a comma in. Then we want it to affect the coal. So again, we're going to go ahead and put another one here. And one more time, put a comma in. And then the last one, we want it to go ahead and affect the cloth. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And there we go. So what this means is when we have no points into this, it should still cost one metal pipe. 
because we've not told this thing to affect any, we've not told this to affect the metal pipe ingredient at all. They're not in these tags, right? So none of these tags contain the metal pipe one. However, it's going to add 56% of the crafting cost because we're using perk add, right? So it's going to say, well, take this crafting cost and add 56% to it, right? So that means essentially that it's going to become, it's going to start at 10 and then about 56% of 10 is like, you know, 5.6. So that's probably going to round it up to about 16. Now, same with this, about 56 extra on top of four is probably going to round it up to six and it's probably going to round up five to maybe eight because it's going to be above 7.5, right? So essentially at first, it's going to cost 16 of these. It's going to cost uh, probably like seven of those and eight of those in order to craft the entire thing. But as we level up, this recipe will start becoming a little bit cheaper. And then we can go ahead and remove some of this white space right here. So let's go ahead and add these to our notes as well. So we've got um, we've got also recipe, not react, uh, recipe, and this is going to be craft uh, tool, and that's going to say um, the tool you need in the workstation to craft the recipe. And then we're also going to start talking about passive effects, and we're going to keep a note of these here. So passive effect um crafting ingredient count um this affects how much more or less the recipe costs for any ingredients that are tagged in the effect you can use perk add to increase or decrease the cost by a percentage of the raw ingredients cost there we go or you can use base underscore add to add a flat value to uh, uh, to add or subtract a flat value to the base ingredients costs there we go. So that's essentially what the passive effect does for crafting ingredient count. Then we also have the tags as well. So let's keep a note of all the tags that we've got from this point. So we know that uh, workbench crafting makes the item craft faster on a workbench as you level up advanced engineering. And then we've also got uh, we've also got chemistry station crafting or chem station crafting uh makes the item craft faster on a chemistry station as you level up and that one is what's the name of that one that's the medic perk isn't it? i always forget the name of that one uh let's go ahead and have a look at that one the name of that one is <laughs> 20 questions guys how much do i know seven days to die the level of that medical perk is dun, 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 dun. physician there we go that's what it's called yeah so that one is affected by physician and then we can also say using perk names as tags such as perk master chef uh perk advanced engineering etc make the passive effects read from those perk levels to do the calculations and essentially that's pretty much everything we can do with adding and uh, modifying recipes in the vanilla way in the xml so essentially now you should know by this point how to go ahead and add new recipes to make them craftable on any of the crafting stations and you should also know how to go ahead and use passive effects in order to make them interact with different perks we've covered several examples in this episode so finally let's go ahead and check the, our final one which is our water filter so one more time we're going to log out of here make sure this thing is saved and then we're going to go ahead and continue one more time and then we're going to go ahead and start right here so let's go into here and then we should hopefully see our water filter. But of course, because we typed this one out manually, let's go ahead and do the F1 test, make the game stutter a little bit, because, you know, I don't think the game likes the F1 test anymore. It kind of, I think it does it on the main thread while it's trying to load, and it kind of goes a bit funny. <laughs> but let's go ahead and do that. Let's go read the console output. No yellow text apart from the animator, which is great. So now let's go ahead and look for the filter. And we should finally see this right here. So there it is. The water filter is right over there, as you can see. And as you can see, yes, it has increased the cost of it. 
It looks like it didn't actually round up. It looks like it actually might round down instead, which is kind of interesting. But as you can see, we specified that this was going to be 10, 4, and 5 for these three resources. But because we've got that effect active, it actually starts at 15, 6, and 7, and it will get cheaper if we level this up. So like before, if I go ahead and level up Intellect, and then level up Advanced Engineering, what we should find now is that this recipe is now the value that we set it at, which it is. As you can see now, we've leveled it up and it's got a little bit cheaper, which is awesome. And there we go. We've managed to set up some recipes. Alrighty, guys. And with that, we come to the end of episode three. So there was quite a lot to digest in this one. And I know that some of the passive effects may be a little bit confusing, but trust me, later on, we will actually be getting into more passive effects and things like that later on, because they do actually appear in multiple files, including items, which we'll actually get to pretty soon. Now, before I go ahead and end off this episode, I do want to go ahead and give you guys another exercise, which is kind of a follow up one from episode number two. So in episode two, I asked you to make a crafting recipe for some gun parts, any of the gun parts that you wanted. In this one, I want you to see if you can take that recipe that you've made and I want you to make it craftable on the workbench and I want you to make it interact with the advanced engineering perk so that when you have more levels into it, it will cost you less and less resources. So initially it'll cost you more and it will cost you less. Remember, if you're unsure, you can go ahead and look at the previous examples that we've done in this episode if you've been following along and see if you can go ahead and adapt your recipe to fit with the perks. I also want you to make it craft faster on the workbench with the appropriate tags as well. So that is your mission, guys. And I want to see if you've uh, I want to see if you've understood it and can move on to go ahead and craft those things with some new little tools in your box. So, yeah, there's a, a lot of like I said, a lot of stuff to learn with modding, but hopefully this has helped clear a few things up, especially if you've seen these passive effect things before and you've been like, well, what the hell are all these? Hopefully I've managed to clear those things up a little bit for you as well and showing you some cool other tricks that you can do when you start adding your own stuff into the game. But guys, that's going to be all from me. Remember, if you do need help with this, then of course you can get in touch with me either in a YouTube comment or just let me know on Discord. My, my Discord link is uh, also in the description as well. So make sure you go ahead and do that. And of course, be sure to check out more episodes coming in the future. In the next episode, we're going to be covering how to actually adjust recipes that are already in the game. So, so far, we've just been adding and removing recipes. But in the next episode, I want to go ahead and look at recipes that already exist and show you how we can modify the ingredients with a couple of new types of XPath lookups and things like that. So it's going to get a little bit more intense in the next one. But trust me, guys, follow along and you will understand it as well. It's not that bad, and we're going to get into it next time. But for me, guys, that's going to be all for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will catch you guys next time. So, guys, until then, bye!